In the previous video, we learned the definition for scarcity, trade-off, opportunity cost. So the reason we learned them because it's part of the core issue related to the economics. And every economist is dealing with scarcity, trade-off, and opportunity cost. But also, it uh, built the foundation for our first economic model, which is called the production possibilities. Or later, we're going to look at the production possibility curve. So the production possibility model, actually, they will illustrate the opportunity concept of the scarcity, trade-offs, opportunity cost. So later, I will show you an example in order to let you know how can we find the scarcity, trade-offs, and opportunity cost from the production possibility curve. So first, what is the definition for production possibilities? So that's the possibility to produce. But how we define the possibility to produce and produce a production possibility curve? So for the production possibilities, it is the combination of the final goods and services that could be produced in a given time period with all available resources and technologies. So before we look at the uh, example for the production possibilities, so let's think about yourself. Let's assume you are taking two class, one math class and one computer science class. So first of all, both of them are very challenging. So every week, besides take care of your sisters and some uh, besides uh, sleeping, take care of uh, your sisters and have a little bit of playtime with your friends. In the rest of the hours, let's see 10 hours you use for studying. So let's assume the more time you put in, the better result you will get. So you only have 10 hours each day for each subject. So which means if you put all 10 hours in your math class, I'm sure you will do pretty well in your math. Unfortunately, it will hurt your computer science class. The same vice versa, if you put all the time to your computer science class, and then you will end up do, uh, computer science class doing well, but your math class would do very bad. And so uh, the production possibility, uh, uh, possibility also indicating that uh, you have a scarce resource, you have better well use your resource to uh, wisely use your resource to carry on the two different activities. And so that example to illustrate the production possibilities. So let's look at the example that we will come with more numbers, which will help you better understand what is the production possibilities. So look at this case. So there's a nation, and they are making a decision. Is They're using their limited resource to produce trucks and tanks, truck tanks. So here the possibilities are, we list uh, six possibilities. So in point A, so the country produced five trucks, but they cannot produce any tanks. So in order to increase the amount of tanks they can produce, let's say increase to two. So they actually have to sacrifice the number of trucks they can produce. So before they can produce five, they, now they only can produce four. And so if they keep increasing the amount of the tanks they want to produce, so eventually they produce five tanks at this point, they cannot produce any more trucks, so which means they use all the resources to produce the tanks instead of the trucks. So what this this uh, movement motion of these two products production um, telling you? So that means to increase tank production, that means your resource must be shifted away from truck production. So that's why you can see initially in point A, you have five trucks. And then move to the F, point F, you only can produce no trucks. The reason is because the tank's production is increasing from 0 to 5. So which means you have limited resource, you can either decide to produce more truck or more tanks. And so eventually, you'll reach to the limit, which means you use all the resource, either produce the tank or trucks. So this uh, table is called the production possibility schedule. So which means you list all the possible outcome, uh, combination of the outcomes uh, in a table. So that is called the production possibility schedule. So we know behind this ta uh, table means you fully use your scale resource. You fully use your scale resource. So you don't waste any of your resource. And so this is called the production possibility schedule. However, there is a very similar uh, a similar concept called the production possibility curve. So they just they will show this exactly the same information, but the expression will be a little bit different because that will be a curve 
instead of the table. So that's uh, uh, put our table, uh, convert our table to our curves. So pay attention on this chart. So the vertical axis is the amount of the truck you can produce, and the horizontal axis is the number of the tanks you can, uh, the nation can produce. As we mentioned before, if you produce five trucks, that means you have zero tanks. So to reflect in our chart is our point A. So in point A, the horizontal axis value equal to zero, which means you have no tanks, but your vertical value is equal to five, that means you produce five trucks. So this is exactly what we see in the table. So then correspondingly, we can find the value B, C, D, E, and F on the curve. So then we build up this beautiful curve. So this curve is called the production possibility curve. So do you remember at the beginning of this video, I mentioned on production possibilities, you can find the three information we just learned in previous lesson. So the first one is called scarcity. So there is a limited to output. So where can we find this uh, concept from the production possibility curves? So you can see for this curve, what is the maximum amount of truck you can produce? Yes, that's five. And at that moment, you cannot produce any tanks. So also, what is the maximum of the tanks you can produce? That's five. So if you produce five tanks, actually you cannot produce no, you can produce no trucks because you use all the resource for the tanks. So in another way, your resource, your uh, there there is the limit to your output is the it is uh, limited by your scarce resource, scarce resource. So the uh, the intersection on the vertical and the horizontal axis indicating your resource is a scarer. And second, the information, the second concept we should find from the chart is called uh, the trade-off. So you can see um, this curve, we call it the concave and decreasing concave curve. If you're not familiar with math, let me explain a little bit. So uh, you can see that in order to uh, producing more tanks from zero to one, zero to one. So you can see on the curve, it's uh, from zero to two, let's say zero to two. And on the curve, you can find the point instant drop from A to B, which means your truck production decrease from five to four. So which means in order to produce two more tanks, you have to sacrifice one truck. So that is the trade-off. If you want to produce one uh, more tanks, you have to uh, sacrifice the trucks. So this is the trade-off. So the third information we're supposed to find from the production possibility curve is called opening cost. So the number of the truck given up to produce more tanks. So for instance, if you try to produce two more tanks from zero to two, so what is your opening cost? So that is one truck. So which means if you sacrifice uh, producing one, uh, the last trucks, so you will actually will be able to produce two more tanks, two more tanks. So the one truck, will be your opportunity cost to producing two more tanks. So now you can see this is our first economic model. They're very useful because they are actually including all the information which is learned in previous three lectures, scarcity, trade-offs, and opportunity costs. So one thing I want to mention, when we are learning economic model, you will find they are very useful. And also you can see it's a super powerful. So this is will be the exam, first example you see. So for the production possibility curve, Besides these three information, you also can find more and very useful information from production possibility curves. So let's see what they are. First, you will be able to calculate the opportunity cost. So let's see, starting at producing only trucks. So if you're only producing trucks, if you're using your resource efficiently, and you can produce five trucks. And then now you are moving your production combination, output combination to B. So which means you are trying to increasing the number of the tanks. So now what is opportunity cost for these two actual tanks? So that means it's one truck. So moving from A to B, you give out one truck to produce two tanks. So the opportunity cost for the first two tanks will be one truck. So then you keep moving from B to C. So what we found is our tanks increase one more from two to three. And at the same time, your trucks decrease from B to C, which means decrease from four to three. So which means from B to C, you must give out one truck to produce one tank. So which means the opportunity cost for producing the third tank will be one truck. 
So the same thing, you same idea. You can get opportunity cost to for moving C to D. When you move from C to D, you can see the number of the tanks will increase from three to four, uh, three to uh three point eight. No, actually it's four. So in that case, in order to producing three point uh a point two more tanks, you actually sacrificing one trucks, sacrificing one trucks. So this is the how to calculate the opportunity cost. So when you work on your home, I have the one tips. So if you look at the, the production possibility curve, if you see as one variable increase, uh, vertical axis increase, your horizontal axis decrease. So then your horizontal axis will indicating the opportunity cost. If it is opposite way, and then your ver uh, horizontal um, axis will be your opportunity cost. So uh, this is still about the three information we need to find from per production possibility curve. So beside this, we also can find other things. So that is called the efficiency. So on the production possibility curve, we can also find the efficiency product, uh, product, uh, production uh, point. So although not all the choices on the production positive curve are equally desirable, so they are all efficient. So which means on this curve, A, B, C, D, E, F, they all indicating you are using the resource efficiently. So how we define efficiency? So the efficiency actually means obtaining the most output possible from the economy's available resource. So that is using the factors of the production in the most productive way. So you can see on point A, B, C, and D, E, and F, so you cannot um, improve in them because they already use all the possible resources. So they are very efficient. So those are very efficient. So that is the relationship between efficiency and the production positive curve. So any point on the curve is the efficiency point, efficiency point. So also, you can find uh, 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 unattainable, uh, the, the inefficient point. So any point inside the production positive curve we will consider as the inefficient production point. So inefficient product point. So there is no guarantee, of course, that uh, we will always use a resource efficiently. So production positive curve show potential output, not necessarily actual output. If we are inefficient, actually actual output will be less than the optimal output. So all points inside the production positive curve demonstrate inefficiency. So what does this mean? So if you look at Y point, at this point, we still have some resource left. We haven't been able to use it. So at this point, let's say we have producing 1.5 tanks and we still have resource. If we try to keep our three trucks and about to try to use most of the resource, we can find Y point will move to C, which means the optimal point will be you can produce in three tanks and the three trucks. But at this point, the producers stick on the Y point, so which means they are still have some resource left over. They are not fully using the resources, so that's what we call it inefficient. So inefficient. And how about the point outside the production possibility curve? So if it is outside the production possibility curve, and we will call it an attainable point. So which means given the limited resource, and even we very well use organize our resource, we still cannot reach to that output. So that output we will consider as an attainable output. So attainable output. So look at uh, point X. So on the point X, we can produce in three tanks, but we just discussed if we produce in three can tanks, maximum trucks we can produce in three as well. But if you look at point X, so given the three tanks already produced, and they are also requiring uh, about 4.5 trucks, but that's impossible unless we have the resource increase. So resource increase. So uh, on the production possibility curve, you not only can find the scarcity, trade-offs, opinion costs, but also you can identify uh, which point is the attainable efficient point and which point is the untenable point and which point is considered as uh, um, uh, inefficient but uh, attainable, uh, attainable point, attainable point. 
So since we talk about uh, efficiency, and I had to connect you with uh, real world cases, and which is related to the production possibility curve. So that is the unemployment. So that is unemployment. So what is the unemployment means? So that means we have enough uh, trained labor, trained labor, but we don't have enough job opportunity for them. So what does that mean? So that means uh, after every position was filled, we still have extra labor left on the market, cannot find a job. So the labor is part of the resource. So which means we didn't fully efficiently using our limited resource. So that actually is not good. So that actually is not good. So in October 2009, for, uh, for example, over 14.5 million Americans were unemployed. So as a result, we are stuck inside the production possibility curve, producing less output than we could have. So now the question is, how, what, should, what can we do? So we can, in order to using all the resources, we should create a more possible job offer to those people and to allow them to work, to help them work. So that's why our presidents, every president in the United States, one of the core issues for them is try to correct, um, uh, correct the unemployment rate and also creating more jobs, to creating more jobs. More jobs uh, also potentially will help us to achieve the efficiency goal, efficiency goal. So next we will look at uh, besides the efficiency we can identify from the production probability curve, we also can find other information. So this is a very magic model, the production possibility curve. So what is the next item we can find from PPC? So that is economic growth. So the economic growth. So uh, in the in the figure you can find in the previous figure. You can find we have point X, so we call it unattainable. So how can we change X to from uh, unattainable to become as attainable, uh, be even inefficient? So that is by moving our curve if, uh, to the right hand side until it across point X. So then that curve will consider uh, X as efficient uh, efficient point. So efficient point. So uh, from this example, you should know, in order to indicate our economy is growing, that means we have more resources, and we have to indicate the PPC will shift from our original curve to the new curve, which will cross over the point X. Point X. So for the economic growth, uh, increasing outputs, and it means in the expansion of the production possibilities. So this will cause by increasing the available resource or by technology advance. So raise our understanding of the uh, standard of living, satisfies more wants and needs, and the create jobs. So that is how we will be able to um, help to create the economic growth. And so if we try to use in the chart to indicate economic growth, so you only need to um, find uh, moving your production possibility curve uh, outward, and then you will have we will have the economic growth indicated through the PPC, through the PPC. So in our next video, and we will discuss our three basic decisions facing the government and how each uh, country answer those uh, three questions. So why North Korea and the US are so different? So can we uh, find the uh, different uh, different uh, way to answer the three basic decision questions? So we will look at it in next video.